We will see now how a neural network can produce an output, which is performed through the feedforward or inference pass. We will start by introducing the basic perception. Uh, we will also further uh, see how we can embed the threshold within the model and therefore utilizing a activation function, which will be a step function. Therefore, we introduce the logistic unit, which output is differentiable with respect to the parameters and the input. Finally, we see how to combine multiple logistic units to create a neural network. And we will see what are the equations that will allow us to perform an inference step or feed forward pass. Let's begin with the perceptron that was invented in the 1950s by Frank Rosenblatt. So there is a series of uh, inputs to this system. Let's call them x1, x2, x3, and so on until the last one xn and then the output of this guy we call we call it z will be simply the summation of all these input multiplied by specific weights that i'm gonna call theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and so on up to the last one theta n so we have that z is equal to um, theta 1 times x1 plus theta 2 times x2 plus theta 3 times x3 plus so on uh, until last the last one so it's theta n times xn. Uh, we can notice, uh, we can write this in a smarter way. So if we define uh, x being the vector x1, x2, x3 up to xn, And then theta the same way so our vector theta is going to be the vector of theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 down to theta n then we can have that our z here can be written as the product between theta transposed and x so what is this what is all this stuff uh, for example i could use a perception in order to uh, decide whether you pass or not the class for example x1 could be the homeworks uh, x2 could be like how much, how many questions do you answer in class? Uh, X3 could be the extra material that you cover. And the last one could be like, let's say the final project. Of course, we have that these uh, parts will not contribute in the same way. So we may have like uh, theta 1, it's equal to 30. Then theta 2, it's equal to 20. Uh, theta 3 could be equal to 10. And the last one, the theta 4 in this case, if we have an example with just 4, uh, inputs and for weights, it could be the final project, which is uh, counting like for 60%. Um, and then at the end, we can say that we can have that our output, so the h uh, based on theta of x, it's equal, 
it's equal to zero. If the summation of these uh, values, so meaning like uh, if you do the homework completely, then you get 30 points. If you get the equations all done, you get 20 points, so they are already up to 50. Then if you do extra material, then you can get up to 60. And then if you do perfect, perfectly the last project, you get up to uh, 120. Let's say we put a threshold, um, so how much, how difficult is the class, um, equal to, let's say, 100. So if your summation of all the scores z is uh, below or equal our threshold, let's call t, and we have here that t equal 100, which is our bias. Uh, then you fail, the exam is going to be zero. Instead, you pass the, the exam or the class. Uh, if you achieve anything uh, above the threshold, which was uh, 100 here. Uh, in this case, we can use um, a perceptron in order to evaluate whether um, you can pass or fail a specific course which has uh, these specific weights. Let's see how to reformulate this problem by incorporating this bias t within the system because we don't want to carry on this t and you will see we will see that this is going to help us uh, in a following formulation we can incorporate the threshold t by simply adding one new uh, node to the perceptron that we will call x0 x0, it's um, the same thing as a 1. So basically, uh, x0 is going to be always to 1. And we have that our z, which is defined as the product of theta transposed and x. But in this case, we have that the vector x is equal to x0 x1 blah 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 up to xn so in this case we have that it belongs to rn plus 1 and the same way theta is going to be theta 0 theta 1 up to theta n and also she belongs to r to n plus 1 um, so in this case we are gonna have the same as before, but again in x0 we will have uh, x0 is equal to 1, so the formulation becomes basically uh, theta 0 times 1 plus the rest, no? Theta 1, x1 plus and so on up to theta n times xn. And when we write our final equation for the H, we can simply say uh, it's zero if Z is lower or equal zero, and it's one if Z is greater than zero. We simply have brought the threshold t from the right hand side to the left hand side. So basically, this new z it's equal to old z minus t. And therefore, we understand that minus t it's equal to theta zero. Uh, to simplify further this notation, we can introduce a activation function that we're gonna call uh, g, which is the step function. So uh, if I have my, if I make the plot here, here we have z, here we have g of z, and then the function is going to be 0 until 0, included the 0. 
and then it goes to 1 when it's greater than 0. So we can simplify h and becomes simply g of our z which is g of theta transpose x and this is also called activation so this is gonna be a so from the previous case we will have that our parameter theta it's equal minus 100 our bias so how difficult is the the task the, the, how is how difficult is it to pass the the exam for example and then there is the list of values we saw before so there is the 30 for the homework there is the 20 for the questions in class there is the 10 for the extra material and then the last part is the 60 for the final project and x it's 1 for x0 always and then it's going to be some values from probably 0 to 1 which says how good you have performed in those different tasks and both of them belong to r n plus 1 Let's say now we would like to have a system um, that can predict whether you will fail or pass a specific class, but you are not a professor, so you don't know how much each part of the class or the homework or uh, the exam actually uh, wait for a specific, uh, for, the, for the total. So let's say we have the same system with uh, several inputs. And we would like to find the combination of parameters, theta, that are actually uh, correctly predicting uh, whether you can uh, pass or fail a specific exam. So in this case, we have that every parameter um, is somehow tricky to figure out because uh, if we have small variations in the parameter, the output uh, age of theta will not change unless the summation of all the parameters is uh, higher than the bias, then we are going to have a positive outcome. But if it's below, it's going to be uh, a zero output. So we would like to have a softer way to determine the output score. So we understand how we place for the specific uh, set of input. We can do this with the logistic unit. So in this case, uh, it's very similar to what we have just seen with the perceptron, but the only thing that is going to change is the activation function. Instead of having g the step function, g is going to be the logistic sigmoid function, which is equal to, uh, so we have that, sigma of z it's equal 1 plus x to z at minus 1. So I can also rewrite this as 1 divided by 1 plus x of minus z. So let's see how it works, uh, how this plot, what is the plot of this function. So let's draw a couple of axes. If z tends to minus infinity, we have that minus z tends to plus infinity. Then we have that exp of minus z tends to, to plus infinity. And therefore we have that 1 divided by 1 plus x of minus z it's going to tend to 0 plus the asymptote is on the zero side 
Uh, then instead, let's see what happens if we have that z tends to plus infinity. We had that minus z tends to minus infinity. Uh, therefore, we had the exponential of minus z is going to tend to 0 plus. And therefore, 1 divided by 1 plus exponential of minus z. So this was 0. And therefore, it's going to be 1 divided by 1. This tends to 1. And therefore, here we have a stays at 1. So, and then let's see for z equals 0. We had that the exponential d of minus z is equal to 1. And therefore, we are going to have that 1 divided by 1 plus 1 is going to be 1 half. There we go. So uh, it's very similar to what we have seen before. So if we have uh, values that are, let's say, above roughly 5, the output of the sigmoid is going to be roughly 1. If we are below minus 5, then we are going to be basically roughly 0. The nice part is that now if we apply some small variations on the weight, we can uh, move z slightly to the left of the axis and to the right, so we actually move the output, uh, which is going to be the sigmoid of the uh, scalar product, which also uh, is going to change in value. In this way, we can try to make some small variations on the parameters and see how the output changes. Also in this case, we have to remember that there is the bias here, always, the plus 1, which is connected down here, and with the weight theta 0, which is basically our, uh, our bias. Just to recap, we have that uh, x belongs to r to n plus 1 theta belongs to r n plus 1 um, and then we have that z is equal theta transpose x and then our hypothesis based on theta of our input x is going to be in this case uh, our sigmoid of z and then basically we had that this belongs to the interval 0 1 we can decide whether uh, we have passed the exam or we if we'd like a binary uh, a binary output we can simply ask we can simply uh, have this the, um, h of theta of x greater than 0 0.5 if we are above 0 0.5 then it's going to be a pass otherwise it's going to be a fail but in this case again we see we can see that h of theta is going to be uh, continuously varying between 0 and 1 so we can see um, how small variations of each of the singular inputs or each of the singular parameter will affect our final uh, activation and therefore our final uh, outcome. Here we have a neural network. A neural network simply is a combination of multiple uh, logistic units. In this case, we have a three layers neural network. So we have an input layer. Then we have a output layer here and then in the in the middle we have a uh, one singular uh, hidden layer 
the dimensionality of the input, uh, which we call S1 for size of first layer. It's going to be 4, so there are just 4 inputs. The size of the uh, hidden layer, S2, second layer, it's also 4 in this case. And the size of the output layer, S capital L, or S3 in this case, is just 1. Um, of course, we'll be, there will be always a x0 here, set to 1, which is connected to all the other uh, neurons. Then we're going to have also here a a0, activation 0 of the layer 2, which is also a plus 1, which is, which is the bias for the last node. Uh, in this case, we can perform more com more complicated operations. For example, each of these singular, singular activations, a1, a2, a3, a4 of the second layer, can compute a, uh, operations on the input. And for example, evaluate whether uh, specific combinations of the input are uh, above a specific threshold or bias. Then the final outcome will simply uh, score based on the output of the previous uh, units. Uh, the final output it's, it's like before called H. In this case we have um, the matrix capital theta and it's also a function of the input. Capital theta it's a collection of uh, parameters. For example, in this case, we have two layers, so we are going to be uh, having theta of layer 1, which goes from layer 1 to layer 2, and theta 2, which goes from layer 2 to layer 3. And in more detail, we have that theta 1 First row, it's simply the, the it's simply the vector theta, which is used to compute a one of two. The second row of big theta for the first layer, second row is going to be also another vector theta, which is used to compute the activation number 2 of the second layer. And the only row of theta 2 is it's going to be the vector of the parameters to compute the only activation A1 of layer 3 which is also equal to the final output h of big theta of the input x. So let's see now a summary of all the, um, all the equations that we have seen so far a bit sparsely. So let's see some definitions now just to uh, recap what we have seen so far and then we'll see an um, overview of all the equations that are going to be needed in order to compute the forward pass of a neural network. So we have that AI of J is the ith activation in layer J. As we saw here in the red circles, circles we have A1 is the first activation of the uh, layer 2, A2 is the second activation of layer 2, A3 is the third activation of the second layer, and A4 is the fourth activation of the second layer. On top, we don't have to forget the A0 of second layer, the bias term, and also, of course, and of course here, 
x0. As we can see, x1 is also the same as saying activation 1 of layer 1. x2 is going to be the same as saying activation 2 of layer 1, and so on. No? So a3, activation 3 of layer 1, and activation 4 of layer 1. In the same way, the final activation, so the activation, the only activation of layer 3 in this case, it's equal to the final H hypothesis uh, with parameter theta, capital theta, on the input X. Capital theta, J, is the collection of uh, mappings to go from layer j to j plus 1. So theta 1, for example, capital theta 1, allow us to map the input, that is the layer 1, to the activations of layer 2. And let's see now the full uh, equations for the for the activations in this case of layer 2. So we have that A1 activation 1 of the second layer it's equal a sigmoid of which is going to be theta uh, for the first layer and then first row, first column, which starts from zero because we have a bias term in the uh, input. And this is multiplied by x0, which we know it's equal to plus one. Then we have plus theta, first row, first element of x, that is not the one, for the first layer, x1 plus, so on, until the last one, we have theta first layer, first row, and the fourth of x4. And there you go. And the same happens for the other activations. So activation, second activation, is going to be second row. So there's going to be our sigmoid, nonlinear function, of the matrix that is mapping the input, so the first layer. We go second row and element 0, which is multiplying the bias always, don't forget. Then we're gonna have still mapping the input, one second row, because it's second activation, element 1 of x1, plus all the others, and the last one is gonna be mapping the input to the second activation of the fourth value of the input x. And we have the same for a3 and then we have the last one here. So it's going to be the last activation, so the last row of the input, um, the input parameter collection, collection, fourth row element bias plus still from the input fourth row first element of the input plus all the others and the last one is going to be uh, the from the input fourth row and also fourth element of the input we can write this in a much more compact way so let it be a2, the vector a2, so a1 of second layer, a2, second layer, up to a4, second layer which is uh, S second layer 
so we can write that a2 it's simply the nonlinear function, so the sigmoid of what? of these operations here, right? so here we have the first row of theta1 and then the second row and then we have third row so we can simply write the matrix theta for mapping the input and multiply by the actual input so what it does, this one is simply uh, performing a matrix vector multiplication so row first row by, fir by the column which is going to be first row as we said before here first row, first element, first row, second element and so on until first row, last element multiplied by all the elements of our input included the bias and then all these huge here amount of operations can be simply down, written down more compactly this way then the final one we have the output which is the hypothesis based on the whole set of parameters on, to respect with the imp, to the input which is also called the only activation a1 of the third layer it's going to be equal to our sigmoid nonlinear function and then we are going to use the map for the second layer because we go from the second layer to the third and then it's going to be uh, the only row but we still write number one here and then first the first element is the element that is uh, connected to the um, to the bias times a zero from the second layer plus our matrix for the second layer first row, only row element 1 multiplied by the activation 1 from the second layer plus all the others up to the last one uh, capital theta for the second layer the only row and the fourth element of the activation and here as well if we define um, a hat equal the vector with plus one and a and this one relates to the second layer then we can express our final output h of theta of the input x is equal our sigmoid of the mapping for the second layer multiplied by the activation with the bias term from the second level and there we go we have completed the whole set of equations that we need to compute the forward pass for a neural network one more definition so we have that sj is the number of elements for layer j so as we saw before s1 equal 4, s2 equal also 4, and s3 equal 1 in this case. By using this notation we can write that theta j it's a matrix which belongs to r of so let's have a zoom here We said that theta j is mapping the j layer to the j plus 1 layer. So there will be as many rows of the matrix as the number of outputs. So 
the number of elements per layer is called s. So we go from s j plus 1 and the number of columns is going to be the number of elements we have in the input which is s j and we have not to forget about the bias so plus 1 uh, in this case so if I draw here the matrix is going to be number of output so s j plus 1 and the number of number of columns is going to be s j number of elements of the current layer plus the one for the bias because this one is multiplied by the bias plus our current input so this one is s j and this is just one element and the output is going to be the vector of s j plus one elements and that's it